we're going to start today, we're going to talk mostly about forage today. We, we alluded to some of that yesterday in the hay production. We're going to get a little bit more in depth today. We talked a little bit about stockpile grazing. We stock, talked about having warm and cool season forages. We're going to take that to the next step. Uh, basically today the scenario we're going to go through and we're going to split up here in a little bit into five different groups. Go back in the back. You'll work in a, a group setting. Try to come up with the ideal way to have a year-round grazing system and produce X amount of forage for X number of goats. So that'll be kind of the goal. And uh, this is kind of the setup we have. We have two Bermuda Forb mix pastures. And what's a Forb? Weeds. Most people call them weeds. Broadleaf Forbs, goats are going to eat those too. We have uh, 20 acres or a quarter of it in native grass, and it also has some uh, re-sprouts coming back from where we've dozed it. Now, will goats browse on those re-sprouts? Sure. And then we've got 20 acres of till bare ground that we need to decide what we're going to do with. So what's wrong with this picture right here? What's wrong with that? Awful lot of goats. <laughs> Not, not quite enough grass, right? So we might be slightly overstocked, and that's good. That's going to be a big part of running a successful forage operation for your goats is understanding when you're overstocked and when you're not utilizing forage enough. And there's a fine line between that, and uh, that's what we're going to try to do is decide where we get to this point, where we are overstocked. So yeah, if you're in a situation like this and we run through uh, one of these droughts like we've had this year, that's a bad scenario to be in. All right, we're talking about total liquidation of the herd there, so try not to get in those situations. Some of the things I really want you to key in on today and keep in the back of your mind as we're working on this, number one, what is going to be more profitable, providing forage for that goat to go out and harvest herself or us buying feed? And feed would mean either supplement or hay. All right, so be thinking about that. And I'm sure many of y'all probably already have the answer in your head, what's cheaper and easier. But that's kind of the ideal of this, this scenario today. Number two, stocking rate needs to be based on the forages grown. All right, if, if forages are growing rapidly, we're making a lot of it, we need to increase stocking rate on those areas. If that forage is starting to dwindle off at the end of its growing season, we need to pull back off of it a little bit. Number three, we can increase stocking rates if we provide additional inputs. Now there's a trade-off. We could stock 500 goats on 10 acres. What are we gonna have to do? Buy a lot of hay and a lot of feed, okay? It's not impossible, but practicality is the name of the game today. And then number four, a balanced forage system will help us reduce hay inputs. And hay usually equates to money and labor. All right, so if we get that balanced forage system, we have warm season grasses during the warm parts of the year, cool season grasses during the cool parts of the year, we can actually get to a forage system where we feed very little hay or feed. And most of the time, that is more economical to do it that way. All right, we're gonna meet average dough. 150 pounds roughly is what we're gonna be using today. And I always get a lot of questions, how much does she eat in a day? Well, a good rule of thumb, year-round, is on average she'll eat about 4% of her body weight. And that's six pounds of forage or feed every day. Now, if we grow all this forage out there in a the pasture and we turn goats out on it and that doe needs six pounds for herself, do you think that they get every stitch of forage that grows above ground out there? No, right? There's going to be some we lose. They're going to defecate on some, urinate on some, Grasshoppers might eat some. So we actually have a certain utilization factor that we need to consider. And for goats, we typically say that they can get about 75% of what we grow. So that's, that's a good factor to remember in your head. That means each doe needs actually eight pounds grown in the pasture to consume six pounds. Make sense? Okay. Now, if we don't rotational graze, if we don't have those paddocks, We've got a continuous grazing system where we just turn them out, they're out there all the time. The efficiency is not as good, okay? We can't make them consume as much forage like that. So our uh, utilization factor would be 60%. And that means we need about 10 pounds per day. For today, in this scenario, we're gonna use this number right here. 75% utilization means she needs eight pounds a day. So that's a good number to lock in your head right now. 
How many of y'all have ever done a forage budget? Forage budget, in my mind, doesn't matter if you raise goats, <coughs> cattle, horses, whatever it might be, this is the first step to being a successful producer is understanding how much your animals eat based on their size, based on how many you have, and then how much your fields produce. If you don't know that, you know, we don't have a clue how many we can stock, how much grass we're producing. So this is the first step. And now this is a fact sheet that OSU has. Here's another number to write down if you go to our OSU website, 2584. Essentially all you do is go in here, you put your livestock description down. We're going to use our 150 pound dough. Her dry matter consumption is six pounds a day. And what was the utilization factor we said we were going to use? 75%. So we know each doe eats eight pounds of forage per doe per day. And then how many days do you want to graze? Maybe we want to graze most of the year, 305 days. Maybe we've got a paddock that we want to graze out in 60 days and then move them somewhere else. So you can put any number in here you want. This is kind of a dynamic equation. You can use it uh, for your whole system. That gives us how many pounds per doe per grazing period. Simply multiply it by the number of animals and we start to come up with the animal side. How much forage do we need to run our herd 305 days, 365 days? 60 days. That tells us that answer. The second step is the forage side. We need to know how much we're producing out in those fields. So we take our pasture description, our size, our acreage, <coughs> figure out how much dry matter per acre we're producing. We're going to talk a little bit about that here in a minute. And that gives us total dry matter per pasture. And then basically what we can see is maybe our goat herd needs 200 tons of forage for the whole year. And our pasture is producing 160 tons of forage per year. What does that tell us? We're 40 tons short. We've either got to buy 40 tons of hay or we have to fertilize to the point that we can increase our production 40 tons. It's a very simple concept, but it's extremely important to get a baseline of where you're at. Let's talk a little bit about the balanced forage system. Now you're going to be using this in the scenarios back here today. And I think this is key. Doesn't matter again if you have goats, cattle, you're in a multi-species grazing setup. Anytime with the input cost we see today for fertilizer, for fuel, for feed, you really need to be looking at a balanced forage system with cool season grasses and warm season grasses. Because that cuts down on the inputs we need during the winter time. And winter time cost or feed cost are usually the largest variable cost in any type of livestock operation. Getting that animal through the winter. Warm season, May, June, July, August, September, those are months where we're going to get good warm season growth. What's a warm season grass that's real common? Bermuda. Bermuda grass. That's what a lot of people use and it's a good one. What if you just had Bermuda in your pasture? That's all you had. You're belling hay, you're growing grass for those goats to eat. What do you notice? How many months does that Bermuda actually grow? Five. How many months are in a year? Okay, so what does that tell you? If you're just relying on a warm season forage, such as Bermuda, you're waiting on five months of growth to provide 12 months of forage for your herd. What happens if we have the drought of 2011 or 2012? That's right. You're in a bind because you're relying on warm season production. However, in 2011 and 2012, we've had excellent spring rains. We've had decent fall rains like we normally do. We could have produced a lot of cool season forage. So that's going to be kind of the goal of today. Let's incorporate some cool season forage. We get March and April growth, October and November growth. That helps to cut out some of that time where we're having to feed hay, supplement, something like that. We still have about three months, some, some producers get away with two months worth of time where you don't have a whole lot growing. But there is another option for those time periods. Anyone guess what that might be? Stockpile forage. We talked a little bit about that yesterday, we'll hit on it a little bit more today. We can actually grow maybe fescue, uh, rye, wheat, rye grass, and we can hold those until later in the year 
keep the animals off of them. And then once we get done grazing some cool season here, we might turn in on those pastures December or January, February. That really cuts down on the amount of feed and, and hay. Start and see how this all kind of works together. Okay, so we get a lot of questions. We know we've got a certain number of warm season growing days, certain number of cool season growing days. How do we need to divide up our pasture into different types of forages? And here's kind of how it breaks down. We have about 160 days of warm season growing potential. That's 44% of the time throughout the year. We've got about 130 days of cool season. That's 36% of the time throughout the year. So those are pretty close. We're almost half and half on those. And it's too cold to grow for about 20% of the year. So really what that tells us is that we need about 20% in some type of stockpile forage to be used in December, January, February. We need about 36% to graze in the fall and the spring and about 44% to graze in the warm season. So if you kind of want to know a breakdown of how to set your place up, that would be a good starting point. Okay, let's get into our scenario a little bit. Are y'all following along on, on the book? Everything you're going to see back there, the cards that you'll be using to look at your different scenarios, that's all in your book. We're go, we'll go through it here. Again, yes. Would you repeat the forages that you stockpile? The forages that you stockpile. Okay, you can actually stockpile warm season forages such as Bermuda grass. You could do that in the fall time frame. Most producers are going to graze that in November and December. You can stockpile fescue. You would fertilize it in the fall and then graze it in January and February. Uh, you can stockpile rye, wheat, hold them to different times, rye grass. Those are all things. Now, ryegrass is really not going to grow a whole lot until springtime. So when most producers use ryegrass, they're looking at March and April grazing. That'd be the very tail end of winter, but works great for that. All right, let's go through this. And again, informal. If you have questions, please ask. We want to make sure we're having a good time as we go through this. Some of the rules of thumb we need to use today is that one acre of unfertilized introduced pasture is going to produce us about one ton of production. So one ton of production per acre. That's good to remember. Native grass will produce more than that. You know, we've all seen native grass fields. It's shoulder high. The problem is we can get about two tons of production out of them, but can we graze all of that? No. Because of our native systems, we need to take half and leave half. So we can only graze about one ton of production. That leaves enough for those plants to replenish their root systems for the next year, and also if we want to run a prescribed fire through that, which is important with native. We need some fuel to get that fire to run through it. So we can only take half, leave half on the native. Good rule of thumb in the real world, it takes about 50 units of N to produce an extra ton of forage on warm season grasses such as Bermuda, all right? 50 units of nitrogen. If we're talking about cool season grasses, what are some cool seasons? Okay, fescue, ryegrass, rye, wheat, takes about 60 units of nitrogen. They're not quite as efficient at converting that nitrogen into leaf material. Native grass does not respond economically to fertilizer, therefore, will we fertilize native? No. That wouldn't make sense, right? We'd be wasting our fertilizer dollar. And if you do inoculate legumes, they can fix their own nitrogen from the air, so we don't need to fertilize them either with nitrogen. Okay, we would expect some increased production from them with no nitrogen input. We've got some different fertilization strategies. Uh, and again, we've got our scenarios set up back here. We could basically put out 50 units in in April to May, which is the start of the Bermuda grass growing season. We'd expect about one ton of production in May to June. We could wait until June and uh, put out 50 units in. We'd see our production a little later in the summer. Or we could put it out at that end of August and look for some stockpile Bermuda grass forage. Expect to get about one ton in the fall. 
And again, some of those are depending on do we get rains. Typically, we do get September rains. Extension agents call that the county fair rain because it's always going to rain in September during the county fair. And that's what we're capitalizing on. You know, we went four months this summer with no rain, but look at September. We had a lot of rain. We could have produced a lot of forage. Cool season forages, again, uh, we talked about the fescue. Fertilize it right there at the 1st of September. It will produce quite a bit of forage for September to October or we could even hold that until after Christmas, after the first of the year. We could come back and fertilize in February to produce March, April, May production, or March to produce April and May. So you can see that we've got some leeway. You know, if we can't get the fertilizer bug in there, we can wait to a different time, or we can use one paddock and fertilize at this time, another paddock we might want to fertilize at that time. Or we can double up. So y'all have that option today. All right, in your book, you're going to see this. This is essentially what you're going to record, what you're doing to your property today. You're going to put your changes down, your expected yield, and uh, keep, keep track of your dollar figures too. So we'll have helpers at each table back here to help you go through that process. One person is going to get back up here in a little bit and tell us what the group did, the decisions that was made. So that person really needs to keep track of this uh, in their book. All right, let's go through these real quick. Multi-species grazing. How many of y'all have cattle and goats? Plan to run them together, okay. We know a 1,200-pound cow needs about 50 pounds of forage a day at 65% utilization, and that's actually good utilization for cattle. Uh, that would be if we were rotationally grazing. A 150-pound goat needs eight pounds of forage a day at 75% utilization. So that comes out to about 6.25 goats are equivalent to one 1,200 pound cow for today's purposes. Or basically in our scenario today, you can run six goats for every one cow, or if you want to run an extra cow, you've got to sell six goats. All right, that's our numbers. Nitrogen costs for today, uh, 50 cents per pound of N, is that pretty good cost? Has any, anybody looked at commercial nitrogen fertilizer lately? That's actually pretty good. Uh, it's run anywhere from, I think it's about 75 cents now. It was running up 88 to 90 cents a pound back early in the summer. So if you can get it for 50 cents a pound, you're doing pretty good. I know that's very hard to see, but if you put 50 pounds per acre, that's $25. It's what it's going to cost you per acre. Now, how much did we say 50 pounds an end would produce? One extra ton. So we've got $25 input for one ton of production. We produced one ton of forage for $25. Can you buy hay for that? No. Okay, so that might be a good investment. Uh, again, cool season. It's going to cost us a little bit more, about $30 per acre. That'll produce one extra ton. Now that could be on ryegrass, fescue, whatever you chose. Cool season annual pasture with tillage. This would be for the till ground. If you're interested in that, we'd plant 60 pounds of cereal rye plus 15 pounds of ryegrass, and we'd have two tillage trips across that field. It's going to cost us about $35 an acre or $700 for that whole field. Uh, we should expect one ton per acre of seasonal production out of that. Okay, so that's an option you could have. And if we plant this, this cool season annual pasture, what's going to be growing in the summer on that till ground? Nothing, right? Nothing right now, because this is an annual, only grows in the cool season. So we could pick a double crop. We could come in with a summer crop. We'll get into that here in a second. Uh, maybe your Bermuda grass, you want to overseed ryegrass. And is ryegrass cool season or warm season? Cool season. So that might be a good option. We'd plant 15 pounds, one broadcast tractor trip. Costs us 15 bucks an acre. And we would need to apply 60 units of N in February to get a one ton of production. And the reason is our Bermuda, we're expecting it to take all the fertility out of the soil that's naturally there. So we don't get any extra credit for the seed being there unless we add fertilizer to it. That's the one, one difference you'll see in this today. This is the only one you have to add fertilizer to if you plant it. Plant fescue on till ground. Uh, we could go in and plant fescue, which is that an annual or perennial? Perennial, right? So it's a one-time planting. Two tillage trips across the field, it's going to cost us $115 an acre to establish that. 
expect about one ton of production per acre. Skip past that one. Here's our summer double crop. We could put cow peas and crabgrass in. Uh, with the seed and the tillage trips across the field, we're looking at about $70 per acre. But we would expect about two tons per acre of summer production with no fertilizer. And that's because of our cow peas, they're a legume, uh, so they're going to fix some nitrogen out of the air. You're probably starting to notice that we're getting a certain amount of forage production at a certain cost per acre. I hope that's what you're picking up on here and trying to figure out how to make all that work. Weed control. We could do weed control. We need to expect about one pound of grass for every one pound of weeds killed with a herbicide. However, if we're looking at goats, goats like to eat those weeds, those forbs. And uh, they're pretty, pretty good quality most of the time too. Buy hay, that's another option we have. Instead of going through all this, we could buy hay. We can purchase native grass, Cerisa Lespedeza hay for $40 per thousand pound round bale. It'll cost another $10 to get it to us. So that's about $50 per 1,000 pound round bale, 100 bucks a ton. Expect the same utilization of the hay as what we get on the forage. Summer double crop till pasture, sorghum Sudan hybrid. Uh, we've got our seed and two tillage, tillage trips, cost us $40 an acre. Expect, again, one ton per acre of summer production. Now that would be an option to go back in on that tilled field as well in the summertime. We could plant Bermuda grass on that till ground. Uh, sprigging that Bermuda will cost us about $155 an acre. But again, Bermuda is, is a perennial, right? So that's a one-time establishment cost. And we should expect one ton per acre of seasonal production with no fertilizer. And then we've got double crop with soybeans. It's gonna cost us about $100 per acre. But again, soybean is a legume fixes its own nitrogen out of the air, we would expect about two tons of production for that $100 per acre.